Hello Capricorn, welcome to Dove and Serpent Tarot. My name is Paul. If Capricorn is your sun, moon, or rising sign, this is your tarot card reading. Please hit the like button, leave a comment, consider subscribing to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. It is totally free. It doesn't cost you anything. If there's something you would like me to pray over or meditate upon or send positive energy toward, please let me know. Now this is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger, and I ask you to connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I might provide. And remember, Capricorn, that the most important part of any tarot reading is you. And a Four of Pentacles, safety, security, stability, health, and wealth, fitness, and finances. I think these are the things that are on your mind right now. Um, I feel like you are, uh, you're getting into a good place, you know, that you feel like things are, things are looking, looking up, right? Things are looking pretty good. Um, I feel like you have, um, you've come into a certain, uh, you come in, maybe into some money, but you've come into something that I think is giving you an increased sense of, of stability. Yeah. Uh, something good happened recently for you. And I think it really is, it's helping you to, um, it's helping you to kind of, uh, to have this sense of like a, of a home base, you know, it might even be something related to the home. Let's take a look at a few more cards. We've got the hermit energy, the hermit in the home, right? Uh, this, and it's not a bad thing. I feel like this is kind of you, lately you've been wanting to stay home more, right? Um, maybe, oh, star. Maybe you've gotten home uh, from a recent trip. Well, do you have the chariot card here? And see, we do have the, uh, the seven of pentacles in the past position. This is the darkness. This, these are some seeds that weren't growing. Um, so maybe... Maybe this was returning home after we kind of, we, we went out into the world and we tried something new. It didn't seem like it paid off. Maybe we came back. I think something good though. I, I still get this feeling that there is something that is um, like a positive development is going on here, right? And maybe these cards on the outside, now we've got a 10 of swords, see? Maybe these cards on the outside are you feeling like you don't want to go out there. Right? We want to stay inside here and we want to do this inner work. Maybe you're very much enjoying your solitude right now. Okay, uh, let's continue. We've got a two now, two of pentacles. We've got a nine of cups. We've got the prince of cups and a six of pentacles. Wow. Yeah, you, um, you've, you're making some progress here. And I think the hermit's kind of saying, shh. Don't ask, right? I'm not ready to reveal it. Um, I think with the past position, I think that there were, um, there was an experiment. It didn't work. So we kind of went back to the laboratory, right? And we are, you've been, you know, uh, working with some other energies. And I think you found something. I think that you've got this star energy underneath you. Uh, I think that spirit it has shown you the way. And I think that it's kind of, it's something that's being kept under wraps right now. That you found the solution to a problem, but you're not ready yet to reveal it. Because maybe you have to, um, there's some revision that needs to happen, right? We do have the Ten of, we do have the Ten of Swords. I think the Ten of Swords really is that kind of, that breakout moment, that break, that breakthrough moment, you know? Um, where you're here in your castle, right? You're kind of, uh, you're sequestering yourself a little bit. Um, but you're preparing for something. You're preparing the road. You're prepar preparing the plan. You are uh, constructing your armor, constructing your chariot as the vehicle of moving this spiritual energy forward outside of what is, has been limiting you. You're just about ready to make this jailbreak, right? I think you tried before, it didn't quite work, but now you've discovered the secret. The star has revealed the secret to you, and it's kind of, you know, you got your cloak over yourself. You're kind of working in secret here, you know. Um, you're kind of, you're slowly building this vehicle, this vessel, and eventually it's going to take you to that transcendent level that you're after, okay? Spirit's also showing me uh, a small statue of a goddess, 
And I don't know uh, if it, maybe it's um, maybe it's the Virgin Mary, maybe it is, uh, maybe it's Isis or something, but a small kind of goddess statue that you have near you right now, right? Uh, it's very beautiful. It's it's very light colored. It's white or you know eggshell color or something like that. Um, you're you're ready to make this move. You're ready to make this. We we'll call it a jailbreak, right? And if, when we look over here, look. I mean, we've got nine of cups. We've got a six of pentacles. This is something that is going to really lead to intense satisfaction and joy and success for you. It's, I mean, it's really it really is a breakthrough or a breakout moment. We always talk about these breakthroughs, right? What about the breakouts? Yeah, I think this is a breakout for you. Uh, I think you're currently in the lab. You're secretly building something that is going to revolutionize your life. It's going to get out, get you out of this cage. The Ten of Swords is quickly becoming one of my favorite cards. It's a card, key word is ruin, right? Plans have been ruined. The relationship is ruined. Oh, I ruined it. Sometimes things need to be ruined, right? Things need to be brought to rubble. Think, you know, you think of ancient ruins, right? It once was something that was really tall and strong and big walls, you know? And now it's, now it's nothing. Now it's not imposing. Now it doesn't spark fear, right? So you're, you're ruining something. You are, maybe that's what that four of pentacles is. There's this kind of tower that's building up around you and you finally figured out the way to bring it down to a less intimidating level. We think of the tower and those are our fears, our worries, our concerns. Our, um, our defense mechanisms, right? Uh, our emotional kind of buffers and these walls that we put up around us. Maybe you discovered a way to <clears throat> still have walls, still have boundaries, you know? Um, but it, the walls are not so high that they're, that they're just so imposing and so intimidating, okay? So in that sense, maybe we have slowly been bringing this tower down to ruins, right? Like ancient ruins. They're still there. You can still see the remnants of them, but it's not scary. It's not intimidating. It's not imposing anymore. Um, what this really could be is this, this work that you're doing or this problem that you've been having. You have found a way. Spirit, I think, has really shown you the way um, of looking at this where it does not seem so imposing. This is not a brick wall in front of you. It's just a, a bunch of bars that are really far spaced out. You could just walk right through them, you know? Um, this isn't something solid. It's not a solid obstacle. It's an air obstacle. It's just, it's an obstacle of thought, not an obstacle of brick and mortar, you know, concrete. So it's a different way of perceiving the obstacle that's in front of you and, and you're perceiving it in a way. This is kind of, this reminds me kind of of that, the thing they would tell you, you know, when you're, you've got to give a speech out on stage, you just picture everybody in the audience uh, in, a, in a chicken costume, all right, or in their birthday suit. And that's supposed to make it easier for you to do the challenging thing. It's kind of like this, right? We look at something in a way where this is nothing. This is just air. This isn't, this isn't even anything real. That it, This can't really do anything to me, you know? And so I think it's really a way of us getting a handle on our anxiety for another thing, right? But the spiritual energy that is deep within you now, this is that connection. This is what the hermit is looking for. See, the hermit is really buckled down, doing the inner work, looking for the lamp, looking to, to spark this spiritual energy, this divine light within you. Well, you've found it. And I think this maybe is giving you that different perspective, this cosmic spiritual perspective. This is not an obstacle. This is just air. You can just, it's gone. It's dust, right? It's dust. It's ancient ruins. Yeah. Well, over here, this was, this is earth. This is pentacles. This is something solid, right? So we're, this is what we're kind of, we're learning, um, it's, it's kind of like we're, uh, you know, I, I don't know, we're, um, it makes me think of like that movie, um, The Great Escape. Who was that actor again? I can't even remember his name. Um, not James Dean. It was, uh, I can't, I don't, I can't remember. Um, but it reminds me of that movie, you know, uh, something subtle, a, a very intricate kind of plan to escape, 
right? Not just brute force. We're not just all going to run towards the door at the same time. No, there's a strategy. There's a subtlety. There's, uh, it's more complex than that. It is more strategic. It's more, it's more mental than physical, right? Uh, but spirit is showing you the light. I think you have a very strong connection with the spiritual light within you right now. Yeah, to the point even where I think strange things are happening in your, in your house. You know, lights are flickering. Um, you can sometimes hear the silverware rattling, right? Um, Spirit's telling me that there's a new, a new child somewhere in your life. Either yours or a friend, family member has a new... I'm hearing this is my baby, right? It could be an animal, I guess, could be a plant, but I'm kind of just, you know, here is my baby. Somebody... Somebody has brought their baby to show you or something like that recently. Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, I think that you, I think that you have a very strong power for invisibility. I think that you're able to make yourself kind of blend in and not be noticeable. So you can do your work kind of in secret, right? And I don't know what this limitation is. I don't know what the, exactly the obstacle is for you. If it's something work-related, if it's something spiritual, if it's something just kind of creative, maybe, or, you know, I don't know exactly. Maybe you're literally, like, building a car in secret or something. Um, but I think you have this ability to kind of stay off the radar. Maybe it's like maybe you're at work, and you're trying to really solve a problem, you're trying to do something extraordinary, and you just kind of want everybody to leave you alone. You don't want the boss to come by and say, oh, hey, you need some more work to do here, I've got something for you. You don't want to be noticed, you don't want to be called on in the classroom, you don't want to be, you know, uh, selected for some special project, no, you just kind of want to hide in a way, right? You want to go hermit mode. And I think that you've been kind of withdrawing from uh, friends and family a little bit too because you are working on something extraordinary something that is taking the four and making a six so it could be that you're innovating you're taking something that is um, pretty good on its own and you have discovered the way you've overcome the obstacle that was blocking you you found a way to make that four even better right even better um, it's you know you've you've supercharged the car you found the way to um, make your work easier, better, more successful, more profitable. This is kind of that, this is that glorious moment where you kind of reveal it to the world and it's like a bright light shining on the world, right? Um, and it is a vehicle for you. We've got the chariot card up here. It's a vehicle for you to make progress. And I don't know what it is, um, but it, it, it's something that's going to be able to carry you into the future. Okay, it could be some spiritual progress. It could be you're developing some kind of new techniques or you're, you're finding your own kind of voice for something or you're finding your own, your own path, your own Tao, your own way of doing things. Yeah. And for a lot of this, we need that introspective work. We need time alone. We need to be invisible for a while so that we can do our inner spiritual work, our meditation, our prayers, our rituals, our, our self-discovery our self-analysis, that we can do it in a way that is undisturbed, right? Undisturbed until you're ready to make that breakthrough, that breakout moment, until you're ready to kind of throw off the cloak and reveal yourself as this kind of shining success. It could be really that you're working on um, building up your business or your career uh, or your art or something, and you don't want anybody to know yet until you're ready until you're ready to lift the curtain off of things or lift, you know, take the cloak off and, and reveal things in their perfection, in, their, in that glorious moment, you know, the big reveal at the end. But until then, you don't want anybody to know. You're working in secret. Maybe you're, I don't know, maybe you're, you're building something that is meant to be a surprise for others, right? But I feel it's more, um, it's more something that... I feel like it has to do with, with your path, with your, even your career or your commitment, or your purpose in life. Yeah. So I feel like you're building, you're building uh, something up. You, you want to make it kind of as glorious as possible before you reveal it. People look at it now, they say, oh, okay, cool. 
No, it's not done yet. Just wait till I'm finished, you know. It's got that kind of energy about it. Um, Spirit showed me a collection of seashells. I don't know what that is. I think it's a, it's meant to be a confirmation. Sometimes these details come in and they are just validations of the energy that we're in, maybe synchronicities for some of you. But Spirit showed me a lot of seashells uh, kind of scattered over the, your desk, like I have all my little toys and stuff scattered on my desk, but if they were all seashells, right? Or, or sea-related things. I'm getting like a starfish, there's a seashell, there's maybe like an oyster shell, uh, you know, with a pearl or something. Things like that around you, yeah. Uh, anyway, let's select the mystery card. I almost forgot. A mystery card, bonus card, confirmation card. This is a random card from the Smith Waite Tarot. This is the factor infinite and unknown. We're going to put it right over here. We're going to put tiny Bob Ross right on top. Happy little Bob. We're not going to look at that card until the very end, but it will tie everything together and it will give us the confirmation at the end of the reading. If at any point during this program you feel like you know what that card is, I want you to put your prediction down in the comments below. Uh, let's do it together. Let's practice our intuition. Right? It's good for us. And I think you've got all the intuition in you right now. You've got that connection. Um, spirit is showing you, Spirit is, is illuminating you. You see, the light is coming down from above. So we're being illumined inside of ourselves. But the light is then actually kind of being poured out on the earth, illuminating the path before you. So you have this self-illumination and also the illumination outside of you, the illumination of your path forward. The chariot has to have a direction to go. And I think that this is, you know, something that's going to create a, a very holistic kind of life for you. Because the chariot sometimes indicates home. We're on this quest for that ultimate satisfaction, that feeling like home. We go out on this, this huge quest that takes us all over the world. And then the, the return home, right? And so I kind of feel like this is that part of the hero's journey, you know, where you're, you're now returning home um, glorious, successful, right? With this kind of, this big stature. Um, and, uh, and I think that you had to go out on this journey, which is kind of, in, it's an internal journey, really, right? Um, and so when I say that you, you returned home from uh, traveling, right? Which I said at the beginning, maybe you have. Maybe that's a metaphor. You know, maybe we have been on this intense spiritual journey and now it's time to really return home and implement all of this, all of these energies and realizations and um, all of this, these spiritual attainments that we have, time to implement them into our lives. So the chariot needs a place to go, needs to come home again, right? And when we think of home, we think of... Um, kind of everything that we want. There's physical satisfaction, mental, emotional, spiritual, creative. Home is home, right? And it doesn't necessarily mean a specific place. It means that place or that state of being where you have the physical, the mental, emotional, and the spiritual, creative um, space. Home is where you can rest your body. Home is where you can be free and honest with your thoughts and your feelings. Home is where you can express your creativity and experiment. It's, home is where we're happy, right? And this is the Nine of Cups. This is happiness, okay? And this is where the chariot is going. This is what you're, this is what you're creating. We have this vessel. It is the vessel of home, right? And the, the secret or the mystery there is that, like I said, it's not necessarily an actual place. It is what we make it. It is a state of being that we then can, from ourselves, fill the space like a light would fill a room, you know. And that's that's really what the hermit is is doing is finding that light within. See the light that's coming down, and using this light to fill the room to make the home right. Uh, you build the church and then you invoke the, the the presence of spirit into that into that church or temple, right. Um, you, you install all the lighting in the house, you build the house, and then you got to flip the switch, turn the lights on. Or, you, you know, you build the building, and then you've got to get the people in. The people are what make the building, right? The people are what make the, the place. Uh, the energy is what makes the, the home, yeah. 
And I think these nine cups are, are what are making your home, you know. Um, but let's talk about the, the two of pentacles here. The two of pentacles is your general energy. And this is change. We're, we're looking at ways that we can uh, improve our lives, that we can get better and better, that we can, um, that we can take what was not working and make it something that does work. And we can fix things. That we can even reuse or recycle things, upcycle, right? Um, I feel like you've made a lot of personal changes lately. Yeah. Um, and I feel like really this is, is kind of the difference between the light on and the light off. This is the difference between you feeling spiritually connected and not. This is you being outside of yourself and then inside of yourself. And right now, I think we're in that hermit mode. I think that you haven't been really hanging out with friends. You haven't been doing the social stuff lately. It's been a period of, of internal work. And maybe the two here now are saying, well, now it's time to flip the switch and go the other way again. Yeah. Now it's time to, to turn the light on and fill the room. Yeah. And I think, you know, I, I think that's kind of the, the transition that we're ready for. And that's getting us out of this out of this, you know, uh, prison, this cage, we're just, we're ready to, to announce this breakthrough. We've discovered, we've, we've found the answer. Um, and now there's, there's really nothing holding us back. There's nothing holding us in, right? There is no cage around us. There is no, there is no tower around us. The tower, the walls of the tower are just made of dust. You touch them and poof, right? And so we're, we're now able to really um, immerse ourselves in this water energy, this real kind of feeling of, of home. Like I said, the, the physical safety, security, and abundance. We like we can be ourselves, we can feel, we can think as we will, we can create as we will. There is a safety and a freedom in the home, right? That's what kind of makes the home. That's why the home is the home. Um, and uh, the next card being the Prince of Cups here. Um, the Prince of Cups, it's strange. I feel like you've, this is kind of off topic. I feel like you've lost somebody to, um, uh, like an addiction or something, right? Because I feel this might, might be a sibling or a friend, somebody your age. And I feel like they kind of, um, they lost themselves a little bit. They got too kind of uh, taken in by a certain energy, and it led to their transition into spirit. Okay, they didn't do it themselves, um, but their choices put them in this energy that they just could not get back out of. Yeah, so addiction or you know something like that, right? And I feel like this card's in the position of what you don't want, because. I mean, for obvious reasons, right? That maybe there has been, um, maybe there has been a, a little bit of a history of that sort of thing with you, not necessarily with addiction, but getting immersed in energy that is really leading to a loss of vision, a loss of spirit, a loss of control, rather than helping us gain the sense of home. Right? Home is where we feel safe, where we can heal and recuperate, recover, where we can grow, where we can be ourselves and express ourselves. Right? And maybe that's what that seven, maybe this is what this dark seven of pentacles was for you. Um, this, this energy that we maybe found ourselves getting a little bit kind of sucked into, and we made the decision to mm -mm, stop that before it became too much, right? Now, I don't know who that was. I don't know if that is uh, um, maybe a brother or a friend, a best friend, uh, something like that. But um, they're telling me that you have a, uh, they're showing me a scar on your ankle, actually. And I don't know if that's from when the two of you were doing something a little bit reckless. I'm getting some water and some rocks, um, maybe swimming where you won't, weren't supposed to swim. Or something like that, and you got uh, kind of, you got a little beat up by the rocks there, or something, right? Um, but I feel like this person was very close to you. I feel like they were very artistic, too. Like they would just, 
you know, they were always like drawing pictures uh, or they did, um, they did uh, like lettering, you know, um, but very artistic, right? Very artistic. Anyway, that's kind of just a little bit of a tangent there. And sometimes these uh, energies come through um, as a means of validating the energy, as a meaning, uh, as a means of, of uh, confirming some of the things that we're talking about and to offer some synchronicity. Okay. Um, now, I don't know that you ever got to say goodbye to that person, right? But they're, they're coming through, and it is, it is, a, it is a male energy, and it, it feels like it's, it's like a friend, like a contemporary, you know, same age as you. And it, they're kind of saying, no goodbyes. There's no goodbyes, right? We'll just say, I'll see you later. Yeah. Um, so they, maybe they, they didn't like to say goodbye. Like they never said, you know, those words. Um, it was more of a see you later or see you soon or something like that, you know. Um, but they're just saying there's, there's no need for, there's no need for a goodbye. So they're still with you. And I think that they're, um, they, they wish to, um, I, I think just acknowledge that they're, they're aware of, of what you're doing and, and they want to, um, they just want, they want to offer you that kind of reassurance. Yeah. That you're, you're doing the right thing. You know, that it, almost they're, almost that they're proud of you. Right. I like that. Um, the six of pentacles is what we have next. And that is really material success. Uh, that physically, um, you know, in terms of business, like I said at the beginning, safety, security, stability, health, and wealth. And I think that the six of, of pentacles is really the, the, the best version of health, the best version of wealth, uh, safety, security, stability. You have that um, in a very beautiful form, like not just baseline, basic, uh, you know, good enough, but something that's really, really stunning. Yeah, you're achieving something that is marvelous, right? Um, you're, you're achieving something that will make you extraordinarily happy. And maybe you are building this home energy, maybe physically in your life, building a home, finding a place to set down roots. Um, you know, maybe you are, maybe you're making a big move. Maybe you're about to travel, relocate somewhere. But it's all centered around this idea of the home, of finding that place where you can be you, where you can be safe and secure and stable and healthy and wealthy and, um, uh, and creative and you can think and feel how you wish and it's that it's that safe space that we all want right it's the home um, so whatever you're doing is helping you to get a, a stronger sense of home whether it's literally a house or a place to live uh, or if it's just cultivating that kind of energy you know cultivating that kind of space Right where we, you know, you walk into a room, you flip a switch, your light fills the room. That now becomes your safe space. That now becomes your circle, your home, right? Even if it's temporary, if it's a, a hotel, right? But I think this is something a little bit more permanent than that. Uh, I think it does have to do with roots somewhere. Yeah, making um, making something as permanent as we possibly can. Yeah. Um. Let's look at that mystery card, though. Yeah. Let's see what's going on here. All right. Um, I just, I am, I'm still, I'm still having that word home, home, home. I'm getting that strong H name. Yeah. So I don't know if the, the H is for the home, but it could be a person's name. Maybe Henry or something like this. Um, but I, I keep hearing home and then just that the H sound. Um, spirits telling me to acknowledge the home. Yeah. The home, the home vibe, I guess, would be, would be the word. Uh, okay, if you have a prediction for this card, I want you to put it in the comments. I don't know what we really, what do we need here? Well, we've got, we've got good water energy, right? We've got good earth energy. What we need maybe is some fire. Maybe we see that we're getting in the, this home and immediately we just feel lit up. We have, you know, our creative energy is just flowing. I think we need some fire. Yeah, I do. Let's see what we've got. Oh, we've got the fool. Well, this, this is cool on a couple levels because one, this is the freedom. 
The fool is not self-conscious. The fool is not limited. The fool is pure air, can just travel wherever it wants, do whatever, completely free, right? Not in this cage at all, completely free. The great escape, right? Just walked out of the prison doors, just walked right out, right? Um, I still can't think of that actor's name from like the 50s, 60s, right? Um, he was also in Bullet, Towering Inferno. I can't think of his name. Anyway, um, The Fool is also that idea of home because The Fool is kind of a nomad, right? Kind of wanders. Doesn't really have a home. Everywhere, everywhere is home, right? Now I'm thinking of Metallica. Um, everywhere is home for The Fool, right? And so this is really now a kind of a confidence right? Uh, it's this aura, this energy about you where, yeah, literally wherever you find yourself, you can be, um, in a relative way, safe and stable and secure and free in your heart and mind, free to create, free to be yourself. Yeah. So there's this idea here that wherever we go, wherever we are, even you're in a, ho in a hotel room, you just, you turn on your spiritual light and this is home. Yeah. Uh, and, and so I think that this is really, this is a, a strong energy that you're cultivating. I think there is a, a physical structure that you're focused on or that you're building or that you're buying or that you're moving to or something like that. But that is not the, so that's not the answer. The energy is not in the building. The energy is in the space between the walls, right? The energy is in you and your light because it's your light that fills the room. Yeah. And so the fool is really giving us a reminder of that. The fool is also just such a, such a free and happy and curious kind of energy, right? Even in the ups and downs of life, it's still this, just this bliss. So everything is just perfect, you know? Um, even in the struggles and even in, you know, the dark times and the, the, the happy times, everything is perfect the way it is. Because nothing sticks to the fool. It doesn't identify with everything. Okay, doesn't need to. Things can just pass right through. Nothing needs to be really like clung to as part of our identity, except maybe the intangible, the spiritual energy, the light. Right? You can't grab light. You've ever tried that? Um, my daughter, she's four. I remember when she was younger, maybe two. You know how you have light beams that shine through the window on a, you know, like a morning kind of morning time. You've got a beam of light that shines through the window and you can see the dust floating in that beam of light. I remember my daughter trying to grab the light, or grab the dust anyway, right? Which, interesting with the dust here, with the, uh, the ruins. Um, but you can't hold on to that. It's not anything tangible. And so our limitations are in our mind, right? Our home is in our heart, it's in our aura, it's not in the walls itself, because the walls are dust, you know? Anyway, very interesting energy for you, Capricorn. This was a good one. We're going to do an extended. Uh, if you want to watch the extended, a link in the corner, a link down below. New readings for Capricorn every Thursday and Sunday, 6 a.m. Chicago time. If you uh, haven't subscribed yet, please do. It is totally free. It doesn't cost you anything. Leave a comment for me. Let me know where in the world you're watching from. Or let me know where you're going if you are traveling. Yeah. I want you to know that you're the most important part of Dove and Serpent Tarot. I thank you and I love you. And we're all in this together.